Holy Spirit, we thank you. Do that which only you do. And when we are done, sweet Holy Ghost, let it be that Jesus is glorified. Sweet Holy Spirit, let it be that the Father is highly exalted. Thank you for miracles that have begun to happen. Thank you for healings. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for a quickening in this place. Take all the glory. For in Jesus' awesome name, we have worshipped. Please be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Praise God. The matters that my brother was trying to establish are critical matters because in the body of Christ as of today, there are all kinds of things that are flying about that if you are not sensitive spiritually, you could become a victim of these things that are being communicated. For instance, people are going about peddling the falsehood that once you are saved, you are forever saved. That there is no way you could lose your salvation. That there is no way if when you have come into the presence of God and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there is no way you will not make it to the end. But if you are a careful student of the Bible, you will know that our Christian life is literally broken into two dimensions. There is the legal side of your Christianity. And then there is the side of your Christianity that requires your active partic participation, which is called the organic side of your Christian faith. In the legal side of your Christian faith, everything that is yours in that space was procured for you without your effort. And this is what I was trying to explain yesterday. In justification, for instance, you do not do anything by yourself to be justified. You are justified on account of Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. The Bible puts it this way. He says that Jesus became a propitiation for our sin. What that is, is a legal matter. He became the satisfaction for divine justice so that those who were guilty according to the order of Adam's transgression have now been declared free on account of what Jesus has done. That's the legal side of your faith. And if you give careful attention to a book like the book of Ephesians, for instance, in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul begins to tell us the things that are available to us, what he calls spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He begins to tell us of those blessings he concludes chapter 1 by letting us understand that those blessings, things like redemption, things like salvation, things like the forgiveness of sin, have been made possible because Christ has been lifted up to the right hand of God on account of his obedience in the earth, his dying, his burial, his resurrection. He has been lifted up and he has been exalted far above principalities and powers. And God has subjected everything and put all things under his feet. Then in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul now shows us the consequence of that exaltation of Jesus, of that glorification of Jesus. He shows us that now because Christ is seated above principalities and powers, he says we are also seated with him in heavenly places. So it will mean that our positional reality on the legal side of salvation is that we have been exalted far above principalities and powers. So just as all things are under the feet of Jesus, all things are also under our feet. But then you now get to Ephesians chapter 6 in him closing that discussion. He begins to tell us in verse 12 that you should take on the whole armor of God that you might fight. Are you with me? So he shows you the legal side that doesn't have any 
bearing on you. All you need to do is come into that arena and believe. But he now shows you the organic side. Just like my brother was saying, Satan will go to any length to guarantee that you do not finish. Even though there is a provision for you to complete your journey on this side of the divide, Satan is your enemy. Peter said, your enemy, the devil, is moving around as a roaring lion. Doing what? Looking for whom to devour. He uses the metaphor of the jungle environment, the civilization of jungle life. And he uses the metaphor of a prowling lion who is looking for food to eat. So that means Satan considers the believer a potential meal. So he's looking for who to devour, to eat up, to become, to make waste, to become useless. So Paul now tells us that even though the legal aspect of your faith guarantees that you are seated with Christ, in the organic aspect of the expression of your salvation on the face of the earth, you will have to do what? Fight. So, brother, the same principalities and powers that he says are under the feet of Jesus and you are seated with Jesus and they are also under your feet. He now says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. What's the first thing? Principalities and powers. But I thought you were sitting. But he now concludes that, that teaching by saying, finally, take on the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand the wiles of the wicked one, of the devil. The word that is translated wiles, there's the Greek that is strategos. It speaks about the strategies, the antiques, the plans of the devil. So somebody who is trying to massage your ego and give you a false confidence that it's not possible to lose this thing. The losing of the salvation is not on the legal side. It's on the organic side. If it was not possible to lose it, Paul would not have said, I have kept. Are you with me? Paul would not have said, I have kept. In Hebrews, he says, hold fast unto the profession of your faith without wavering. And that is not the faith he's talking about that you used to claim things that are not your own. You see somebody driving a car, I claim it in the name of you, you are a thief. Because the, the, the pattern in scriptures is that you don't claim what has not first been given. So in the Bible, before they claimed anything, they went to check the Lord saying. So if you are claiming something that God has not factored into your mortal expression, you are just a thief. You are suffering from a malice. It's called covetousness. And you know in the body of Christ, we have found a way to masquerade the things of the devil with religious piety, with pious expressions. So, the faith he's talking about there is not the profession of I claim my miracle house or I claim my miracle money. God doesn't give people miracle money, but that's not the teaching. Eh? That thing they call miracle money is not, is not, that's not the teaching. But he's saying that the profession of your faith is talking about your absolute belief and confidence in the modicum and in the body of the, the details of our Christian expression upon the face of the earth. He says, hold fast without wavering. Why? It is possible to waver. In Hebrews chapter 2, he says that it is possible to drift. Have you seen that scripture before? Give me Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2. Give me verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. He it says it's possible to drift. It's possible to drift. Oh, media is not with me. Oh. He, therefore, we, we must give what? The more earnest heed to what? The things we have heard, let's what happened? We drift away. Here now, Paul is using the metaphor of a ship that is anchored at dock. So what is your anchor? The things that you have what? You have heard. 
He says, if you do not give earnest heed, I like Paul. Paul chooses his words carefully. Do you know what earnestness speaks about? It speaks about a state of passion. A state of commitment. A state of discipline and dedication. He says, if you do not give earnest heed, he didn't just say give heed, earnest heed to it. He says, there's a potential for you to do what? Drift away. You can drift. On the ocean of life, you become a boat that is in limbo. Tossed by every wind of doctrine. Moving here, moving there, looking for what is not lost. Why? You did not give more earnest heed. So, for those of you, I just felt a body. That it's possible somebody is saying, and these men of God and their legalism, you cannot lose what God has given to you. Oga? Oga? Huh? Just do careful Bible study. You will read things in the Bible like, he that endures to where? To the end. It's not me that wrote it. It's Jesus. It's God. It means therefore that it is possible not to endure to the end. It's possible. And the reason the Bible uses such words is to let you know that Christianity is not a joke. It requires a reality called endurance. You know, many young people have not been tested, so they don't know how difficult it is to be a Christian. We, bro, we don't really know you. We don't know you. Let a sister corner you in a place where nobody will ever know what happened. Let her just corner you in that corner. And then she removes her blouse and does her breast like this. Oh, oh. And somewhere at the back of your mind, you know nobody will ever know what happened there. It's when you have been put under such weights of test, then we will know whether you can endure. He that endures to the end. Some of us, a sister has not even cornered us. It is pornography that cornered us. Something that is, is not real. Is people came together to act. People possessed by demons. You know, sister, I, I almost died the first time I studied and I found out that the adult film industry, that is the pornographic industry, and all of that, is, it has a higher stake than even oil and gas. It's a richer industry than oil and gas. You don't need to believe me. We are, we are, we are learned people. Go and, go and research. They did a survey in America among Christian men. Eight out of every ten Christian men said they were struggling with porn. It's a massive billion dollar industry. There's child pornography. There's bestiality. There's all kinds of things. People are struggling to watch it. That research that I studied, the research said the most frequent day for watching pornography is Sunday. You know why? It's Christian men that watch it. There is a need for enjoy. If you are going to be pure in this life, when Satan comes with an onslaught, a weight against your soul, there must have been something that has been lodged in your spirit. It anchors you to sure. Sure there simply speaks about what is real. It speaks about reality. This is why the Bible says that when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will bring you to anchor. He will lead you unto what? All truth. Is anchor. Is the anchor for your soul. And this is why the major attack of the devil now is against doctrine. He doesn't want you to know what truth is. As long as truth in your soul is fluid, that means what I mean by that is, you, you have not made up your mind that when it comes to morality, the Bible is enough. When it comes for, to how to live your life, you, you will die on the heel of the truth of God's word. That if God says now like this, so I believe it with all my heart. I don't want to negotiate it. When it comes to marriage, now like this. When it comes to relationship, now like this. You know now, some of you, your mentors are on social media telling you there are various stages to marriage. The first stage is talking stage. The second stage 
in shop right stage. <laughs> so you, you move from talking stage to going out. Then from going out, you now begin to check compatibility. You now start dating, dating stage. From dating stage, you enter marriage. Those are your mentors. Meanwhile, the true believer, he is anchor. He is anchor. The Holy Spirit is supposed to bring him to truth. And that truth first is in scriptures. Then that truth is the experience of the living Jesus.